you possess. You have one kind of spirit. What a spirit? Uh, Woman disturbing you in the spirit. A lot. And then you have uh, you have married a lot of women in the spirit. Every day I'm tormented by these spirits. I don't speak at night. Help me, man of God. Una mujer lo ha tormentado en sus sueños. This is not yet confirmed. Because you are coming from all the way long with long, long chain, chain, chain of women. Yes, it's true, men of God. How many women before this woman? More than six, seven. Televidente, continuamos con inicio de profecía, así que conéctese y utilice su fe para ponerle una demanda a la unción. Le spectateur, nous, dans, nous sommes dans la section prophétique avec l'homme de Dieu prophétique Joshua qui est en train d'administrer la prière dans le nom de Jésus-Christ. So it's free, it will tell you more. Emmanuel. My name is Jabulani Boutelez, I'm a South African. Next to me, is my lovely wife, Mrs. Botelezi. I'm standing before you at the prophecy of the man of God that was last week when he told me that uh, I am possessed by marine spirits. I'm with a woman next to me, but I never slept with this woman for the past four years. Why for the past four years? It's because I ended up developing a pain in my manhood that could not allow me to even touch her. Why is all that? It's because of what I did in the past. When we started our government as early as 1995, a number of people were craving for power. I'm amongst those people who were part and parcel of having that power. But I did not know how to get that power. My family, in a natural sense, were people who had nothing to do with God. My family, naturally, were customarily. I think you can detect from my surname, Butelezi. We believe so much in customs and a very, very little in the word of God. And when we grew up in this manner, we all hooked in the things of the traditions. Now, this power that I needed, I had to ask for it from my auntie, who had to advise me that for me to be like them, who are already in power in government, already ministers, already what I have to do, I have to appease my ancestors. I did not know anything about the ancestors because I was still at the young age by then. But what they did, they introduced me to a particular man who was coming from Mozambique. This man, I paid him a lot of money because I was already working. What he said to me was that uh, we will go, rather undergo different stages of rituals for me to attain this power the power to be promoted, the power to have money, the power to be famous, because that's all about it, it's about fame. And uh, you'll never think that for you to be famous, you must get it from God. I did not know God. Now what I did, I agreed to him, then I gave him the money. The first thing that had to be done, he said to me, I must go and appease my fallen family members. What he did, he asked me to buy some livestock. I bought sheep. He slaughtered those sheep in his house. And mind you, he didn't have a house. He was coming from Mozambique. He leased one of the houses in Soweto. 
where he was staying at the back of the house. He was paying lousy 200 rands that he did not even have that money to pay. I was supporting him to pay that money. He did not even have enough food in the house. I was supplying him, but I wanted power to this man. Now what happened is that I must buy all these livestock. I bought the livestock, then he slaughtered that leg stub at the back of the house where he was staying in a small shack. What he said to me is that uh, he took the blood of the livestock that he shed and uh, put it in a bath. And uh, from the bath he took all the inside of the livestock which was completely dirty which are things that are supposed to be taken and be thrown away, the stomachs of these things. The food that is being eaten by this thing in the stomach, he took all those things to a bath and he put them in there and that blood of those animals. And he said, I must strip and I must take a bath with that blood. This is exactly what I did. And by that time, this man who's allowing me to do all these things. This man who had no house, this man whom I was buying shoes, is the one that I thought that all things that I needed, they will be coming from him. Outside his house, I had a very big car. By that time, it was the beginning of the Volvos in South Africa. I'm among the first person who bought that 4x4 Volvo, and that car was parked outside. But here is this man coming to this man to ask for power. After doing all these things, he then took me to the graveyard the following day. I had to leave my office. I was the director generally in Gauteng. I had to leave my office, follow this man. He said, I must spot where my mother, my father, and so on, my aunties were sleeping. I took him to these graveyards. When we arrived at the graveyard, he took the soil of the grave and uh, took it back home with me. And uh, again, he bathed me with that sand from the graveyard. And uh, what he said to me, the next move, now I'm supposed, he gave me snuff. There's this thing called snuff. Okay, that is used by Sangomas. He said, I must go back to those graveyards and uh, talk whatever thing that I need on top of those graves and take all my time to sit on top of that grave and relax for about two hours, which I exactly did. I took my car, I packed my car next to those graveyards. I, this is how I dress, I stay in a suit. I go with this suit. I slept on top of the graveyard. Practically during the day at the eye of everybody. I did not ask myself whether this thing, it sounds embarrassing. When you are already involved in this thing, there is nothing that tells you that this is not supposed to be done. Everything for you is yes. I stayed on those graveyards, I even slept there. And everybody passing by, he saw this big guy sleeping on top of the graveyard, trying to access power. Shortly after that, come the weeks after, he said that uh, I must come to his house where he's going to take me to the bush. He took me to the bush. I never knew that even in so way to the bushes. He took me to the bush. When he got into that bush, it's a very thick bush around Soweto. I did not know about it. When I came in there, there were candles all around the area where I was supposed to be. He has lit candles all around, and he said to me, I must come inside this arena and uh, relax there for another coming two hours, which is what I did. I went there, I stayed in the middle of that arena in the bush, and I appeased for the spirit of the bush. I finished with the spirit of the bush. The last exercise that he had to do with me was to take me to the river. That is why that river matter was exposed on TV. He took me to the river, I drove him with my own car, 
we went to the river. When we arrived at the river, this time he said to me, I must take off everything. I said, everything? He said, yes, take out everything. And in that river, it was not far from the tar road, where everybody was just passing there, could see me there being naked. But to him, there was nothing wrong. And I was so ashamed because even children were looking at me. But he said, I must not worry about these guys. So I took off my trousers. I took off my suit. I took off my shirt next to the river. I remained with my underwear. He said, no, 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 my brother, take out even the underwear. Now I started looking aside whether other people were seeing me. Then I took off my underwear. Then I stood in the middle of this river. The river is flowing. And uh, not far from me, there were women who were doing washing. These small rivers in Soweto, the woman was doing washing. They were watching me. Not far from the women, there were dirty animals that were thrown in that river. Rotten animals. And all that water was coming towards me. But because I was craving for power, I needed this power, I had to do exactly what this man is telling me to do. I stripped. After being naked, he took a scissor. Then he started incising me. All over my body, he incised me all over. He last action that he did, he started even incising my manhood. He incised my manhood and I could see my blood flowing to that river. I was red all over the body. And he said to me, I must start swimming. I followed instructions, then I started swimming. I swimmed there on my own. He gave me a 1.5 liter of Coke. He said, I must scoop that water, which I did. I closed it. He said, I must take it home. Before that, he said, I must drink that water. I drank that water because I needed power. Then we went home. When I was in my home, I took that bottle of water to the corner of my bedroom. At that time, I had a woman that I wanted to get married to. This water that he gave me, he said to me, every time at 12 midnight, I must get up, take this water into my bath, put some more water and put that drop of water inside and start swimming around midnight, which I did. And he said to my sister, I had a younger sister, that while some bees is swimming in the water upstairs, my bedroom was upstairs, my sister, he gave my sister some part of concoction. He said, my sister must move around my yard and start splitting this concoction all around my yard. And listen to this one. When my sister is doing all these things, she ordered my sister to do these things naked. She must not put on clothes. The advantage I had is that I could not see my sister because I was upstairs. Because I just didn't want to see my sister naked, moving in the yard naked. Whilst I was taking that path at midnight, then I noticed certain problems in the house. The woman that I was with by that time, the mother of my child, we started having unnecessary quarrels. We could not understand. Little things were a problem. What happened was that uh, come bad time, it was a, a month or so after, come bad time when we were supposed to go to bed. But I realized something that uh, life is different. When I now touch this woman of mine, it's like I'm touching Mr. So-and-so. There was no mutual 
feeling of a woman next to me. I started separating this woman of mine. I started facing the other direction because I could not feel her by that time. But to my surprise, when I get up in the morning, I will be very embarrassed to see a pool of spams on my sheet. Meaning, I was making love the whole night. But the physical woman was closer to me that I could not have feelings for. It continued, listen to this, whilst I am busy doing these things at night and not having the feelings for my wife, when I get to work in the morning, the minute I climb the highway, any woman that I will see asking for a lift, I will stop. I started picking them up to town. And when I'm driving them to town, I will feel my men very active. But in the house, there was no activity. And what happens now is that when I feel my men active, I was not afraid to ask this woman that before I get to work, we must pass somewhere just for sex. It started there. And uh, what was funny again, she will never say no. On our way to town, there are small bushes on the highway. And uh, I will leave this highway. South African highways are very busy. But I will leave this highway and drive towards the bush. Whilst we're in the bush with this woman that I don't know, two minutes I'll jump to the seat where she is and we will be making love. But I don't know this woman. And uh, to make it worse, whatever I will do with this woman was unprotective. No protection, no condom, I will just do it. When I arrive at work, I was told before that this bottle of water, I must also sprinkle it in my office, which I did. When I arrive in my office, it will be like I never met any woman. Any client that comes to see me as a big shot in the office, for any other reason, I will just call her to my office, and my PA is sitting there, and she knows that when I'm talking to somebody, she can't come in. I will just call her in the office. I can't tell you what's wrong with me. And that woman, two minutes, I will see myself hugging that woman, and I don't know this woman. But I'm in the office, I'm at work. And two minutes, I'll be sleeping again with that woman in my own office of government. It will not take me one woman to do that. It will never take me two. It will never take me three. When come five o'clock when we're supposed to leave, I would have slept with at least four women inside my office. There will be a lot of meetings that I conduct as the head of office with my staff. My staff was around 100 and something. I will leave my office upstairs I will climb in a lift, and my staff is waiting for me to address them at the ground floor. They will send somebody to come and call me because I'm the last person to come. When this woman comes into my office, she's also the prey for sex. If I don't do it in my office, when I climb the lift, it's only three floors. During the process of going down to the meeting, I will be all on top of this woman, it, automatically. And uh, let me tell you again what happens when I do these things. I am in the lift. I don't know whether somebody will press the lift and come in. That thing is not in my head. I will just do it and uh, go down to the third floor. And uh, when I reach the third floor, I'm all dirty. I never cleaned. I will just lift up my zip and start addressing the meeting of about 200 people. So one thing is sure. The Bible says that confession brings freedom. He who experiences it knows it best. 
the caliber of the person talking, without being told, is not, you know that it's not just an ordinary person. But the reason why he's going so deep to expose the devil is because he wants freedom. So it's very important that we pay attention and learn the necessary experience for us to also avoid similar experiences. Remember, devil is a person, but a person without flesh and blood. So let's be very careful and listen attentively and pick up the lessons that concern us. May God be with us in Jesus' name. Within this period, I started accessing a lot of money. Tons and tons of thousands of rent. With this money, I bought all the cars that you can think of in South Africa. With this money, I attended nightclubs. With this money, I bought houses. I had an advertising company. This advertising company, I was doing billboards with a certain Indian fellow. And this Indian fellow that I was doing business with, he was also a man of rituals in an Indian way. When I come to his house, I'll find him, the house is full of smoke, and he's busy doing whatever he's doing. And because he's a friend, I will try to make him happy and say, let me do the same as well. He gave me those things, and I got also accustomed in doing these things that I did not know. And uh, all I discovered later, having injected a lot of money in it, this business of ours, I left him with all the business, with all the money. I even went to the bank, because I was deposited in Johannesburg, to go and do accounts on his own. I remove my name there so that he can access checks, so that that's the spirit that he gave me, the spirit to be blind. Okay? Now, what happened was that one time there's a woman that I met. I did not attend church, never. I did not want even to see the door of the church. When I was injected with the spirit, the spirit of lust, now I started craving for women all over. And because I made a covenant of blood in the river, people of God, what happened? I did not enjoy anything sexually without seeing blood. I enjoyed mostly women who were menstruating. Then from that level, then I will feel great in myself. This spirit will lead you to do other disgusting things. In other words, you are telling us that you did horrible things through the influence of these demons. As a result of the initiation you underwent by the riverside. Correct, sir. Okay, now tell us some experiences you had. How does this demon normally appear to you? in a family, how do they really tormented your life? All these women that were with me, the woman that when I started these things, she started losing her mind in the house. When we were in the house, she started getting afraid. Oh, what's wrong with you? Whenever she was moving around the house, she will grab me and say that I must accompany her around the house. But to me, I did not under I thought that she was getting crazy. My bedroom was upstairs, and when we go to the bedroom upstairs, she will hold me like this, like somebody who's lost, and she will push me in front that I should go in front, and she will follow from behind. Then she was seeing things that I could not see. But to me, I took her as a mad woman. In the bedroom, there's a bathroom. Whenever she wants to go for a toilet in the bathroom, she will ask me to accompany her to the bathroom. She started now moving like a zombie. Somebody's like she is, she's senseless in the house because of the thing that she could see that I could not see. She ended up leaving the house. Okay, could you just explain to us, did, did, you, did you finally ask her what she was seeing? Could you just describe what she was I, I could not get any understanding of asking her what she was seeing. I was blind. I, 
I could not make her tell me anything because I thought she was crazy. This is all I had. It's crazy. When we are in these things, there's nothing that you will see. I thought she's crazy. Then she left the house. I lost that marriage. After all this, I was going for my business meeting in the DRC. I was caught at the airport. When I was at the airport, they told me that uh, they are catching me up because there are things that I did 20 years ago. I said, we are I'm being caught for things that I did 20 years ago, but why didn't you arrest me all these years? That was when I landed up in prison. And when I landed in prison, people of God, it's when I caught up with Christ. When I landed up in prison, it's when I started looking at the Bible. When I landed up in prison, it's when I started crying. When I landed up in prison, it's when I started speaking Christ. When I was in prison, I heard a voice that said to me, whenever you leave this prison, you must leave this prison married. I had no love, people of God. Things that is called love that you see me having now, I did not have it. For me, the Spirit made me to use women. That's my job because I had money. I would give a woman whatever amount I want and use her. That was me. That was not love. God said to me, you must never leave this place without getting married. I phoned her and when I phoned her, I was already chasing her away from my place. When I phoned her, I was already fed up of her. I was already enough of her. I told her that she must go home. I was three weeks with her by then. Then what happened? I said to her she must buy a ring, and I said she must bring that ring in prison upon the voice that I had. When she came to prison, I had no other choice except to kneel down in front of the waters of the prison, and I married her. As you can see, we are married today. Okay, you mean... You got married to your wife while you were in prison? I got married to her whilst I was in prison. All right. You said this very demonic influence made you to move from one woman to another. Could you tell us how far this had really destroyed your marriage? And was there any ch child you had or children you had in the course of this? Could you just tell us the extent this has affected your marital life? People of God, that spirit the bush, the river, and all these other sectors, the grave, I ended up with different women having 13 kids. And the 13 children are the children that she's taking care of even today. 13 children, I even never got them in decent places. I got them in the car, I got them in the bush, I got them in the water, because I took a lot of women and made love with them in the water. This is the kind of life that I went through. Before you tell us how you come to know about the synagogue Church of All Nations that led you to this place for your deliverance finally, could you just tell us exactly what the man of God said in the message of prophecy that very Sunday? The man of God in the message of prophecy said that uh, I'm possessed with marine spirit. I am not married. I think in the clip you saw that I was arguing with the man of God and said, I am married. But the man of God said, I'm not married. Which was true in the practical. I am married, but in the spirit I was not married because I was married to all the spiritual women. What happened again? I could not, for the past four years, have a relation with her as my wife. And when I came here, the problem that brought me here was that problem because I was about to tell her also that she must go. When I came here, I reported to the men of God that I've been not having sexual relations with her. I stayed for the second week. In the second week, the men of God said, after all the teachings, he gave me a room where I could stay with my wife. 
What was exactly the problem you were having? How this problem affected your marriage? And even in the dream, in the physical, what were the kind of images you were seeing? How did they really affect your life before you finally received your deliverance? We know you have a wonderful testimony to give, but before then, tell us how this problem really affected your life before your final deliverance. When the first wife left, I left alone in the house. When I was alone in the house, I had a vision whilst I was sleeping. Something that I could see practical. I saw small people like this. My room was upstairs. I saw these small people using some ropes, coming through the rope to my bedroom. And they jumped in and I was sleeping. I was looking at them just like that, but it was like it's a vision. And when they came into my bedroom, they were looking around, and I was looking at them as, what are they looking around for? Then it came to mind that they were looking around for my ex-wife who was with me. What it means, whilst I was busy with the other side, my ex-wife was busy with these small people on the other side. Now, because they could not see her, they looked at me, and they started coming to me. And when I looked at them, they started stripping their trousers. And they came to me, they wanted to take off my trousers. I was wearing a pyjama. Then I could understand that they wanted to sleep with me. Then I woke up. So these are the experiences that I had when immediately my wife left and I remained with these people. Now, finally tell us, the exact problem you had between you and your wife as a result of you being involved in these demonic influences, how it affected the marriage between you and your current wife and before you finally came for your deliverance. I could not sleep with her for the past four years. Why? Because I had already divorced this kind of a life that I was doing. That was the biggest mistake that I did. Now, when I was trying to focus on her, because I was still married to these people, what they did, they stopped me from having sexual relations with the same woman. What does it mean? When I start to feel it, and my manhood started rising, I will feel a pain that I never had in my life. Then quickly I will push it aside and stay on my own. That continued for the past four years. I could not sleep hugging her by my side. I could not turn the other side. I could not, my position to sleep for the past four years was on my back. Meaning, I, could, I must not touch her. I must not do anything with her. And uh, because of that pain, my sleeping was having my feet straddled like this. Because when I close them, then that pain will start. So, I decided to myself and said that this is no life. So I told myself that having been introduced to Emmanuel TV by one guy who came to my house, because whilst I was in prison, all my houses and my cars, they were going. All the cars that I had, they left. Houses, they left. One house was remaining. Now, meaning that when I was coming from prison, I was not going to find a house. All the monies that I had, even today, I came with the money that I borrowed to come for this session. The man who was running all of those millions. Now, what I'm saying to you is that I faced this nightmare all along until I came here. And I said to myself, Having been introduced to Emmanuel TV, praying all the time over the screen over Emmanuel TV, and nothing was going on, I said to my wife, let's borrow money. Let us go. If nothing happens to me at school, I did not tell her. I said, I'm going to commit suicide. That is what I told myself. I'm sorry for that. I told myself that I was going to commit suicide. If Nothing happens. I can't be having somebody next to me for four years that is staying next to me as a, as a tool 
I could not do that. When I came here, the faith that I had, having seen all these things happening over the TV, I said, the man of God can't fail to solve this small thing when I see big things happening over the screen. When our transport was coming inside Scon, I felt energy. I said, no, 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 no. Here my problem is going to be solved. I've got a letter from doctors that says that uh, they can't solve my problems. They've operated me twice, and I refused to be operated for the third time. They gave me a letter that uh, there's nothing that they can do. I've got that letter. But when I came here, I just said to myself, my problem is solved. When we were taken to the dining hall and to our room, the first day I came into that bedroom, I just felt energy in myself. I started doing exercises, which I was no longer doing. Every time, if you can meet these people who sleep with me, I love exercising. I started doing this exercising. I had faith in me that this thing will be solved. Now, could you just tell us, immediately the message of prophecy came forth from the man of God, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua. What happened afterwards that brought about your final deliverance? I was given that room. I went inside there. I could see some people are laughing already. Exactly now I am healed. Everything that I experienced over four years, it's gone. Now it's my wife. It's unfortunate that she's going to pay for the past four years. Okay, <laughs> I am saved, people of God. All the troubles that brought me in the synagogue, they came to pass. I thank the minister of TB Joshua. I thank the scorn. I thank even those that are watching at home that here, this is where you get life. Here, this is where you get deliverance. Here, this is all you got, all you need through Christ Jesus. Once again, shall we put our hands together beautifully for the miracle working God. Now we thank God Almighty for what He has done in your life. So far, so good. We rejoice with you greatly. And we believe you are in the best position with all your experiences, with being in a wonderful position. And at the end of the day, after you involve yourself in demonic influences, they actually run you down. You are in the best position to give words of advice to all are sundry. Based on your experience, what word of advice do you have for those who are listening to you all over the world? A lot of us are putting on beautiful suits. You can see us walking around. Problems. Problems. And all I'm saying as an advice to men, stop craving for power that is unnecessary. Stop going to places that are unnecessary for power. Power only comes from God. Look at God. He's the one that will give you power. This power that you are looking for is the one that will make you to sleep with all these women and after that you come home and give your wife AIDS. That's all. And just to say something, because God wanted to use me as his satellite to you guys. I went to the doctor after all this experience. And believe me, I never used a condom in my life. But when I went to the doctor, the doctor said to me, you are the healthiest somebody ever. Now, we thank God Almighty for everything he has done in your life. We also want to ask you finally for the benefit of our viewers all over the world. Before now, you said you could not sleep on your side. Either ways, you only lie by looking at the roof with your back. And you also used to experience pain in your manhood. What do you have to say after your deliverance? Do you mean all the pain is over? Everything is over. Let's put our hands together beautifully for the miracle working God. Now, finally, let's hear from your wife. My name is Safira Butelezi. I'm from South Africa, and he's my husband. Jabulani Butelezi. He said it all. I'm a happy woman now. 
when the man of God last week was saying, new dream, new marriage, he was talking to me. Everything in my house now is new. It's a new dream, it's a new everything. My kids are new. I believe that they are delivered in Jesus' name. That is indeed the summary of the whole thing because she knows that the husband has actually touched every angle of the whole story. Now, finally, what word of advice do you have for women who are out there? Women all over the world, I'm saying to you, a man is somebody that needs our support. Support our men. They need us. That is why Eve was created. Hold on to your husband, regardless of what they are going through. Hold on. And it is going to happen because it happened in my family. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's clap for wonderful Jesus Christ once again. Indeed, it's a life experience. I will thank God Almighty for what he has done in this family to the glory of God. And we also want to admonish this by telling you that in as much as you're delivered through the Word of God, you should go and make the Word of God the standard for your life. And as you do so, always remember that better is not good enough. The best is always yet to come. Once again, shall we put our hands together beautifully for the miracle working God. And I want to say, before I could not meet my husband as a husband and wife, and he used to get so angry. Every small thing, he will become so sensitive. But now, miracle has just happened. Miracle happened, and it can still happen to you. Thank you very much. He doesn't have pain anymore. I saw flames. He was doing the push-ups. I'm like, wow, this is my first time. <laughs> Glory be to God. 